Chapter 9 Robinson's Shelter Robinson saw at a little distance what seemed to be a cleft or an opening in a huge rock. If I could only get inside and find room to stay overnight, the rock would protect me from the rain, from the wind and wild animals better than a tree. He long sought in vain for a place wide enough to allow him to get into the opening in the rock. He was about to give up when he seized hold of a branch of a thorn tree growing on the side of the rock. He looked closer and saw that it grew out of the cleft in the rock. He saw, too, that at this point the opening was wider and that he had only to remove the tree in order to get in. "'The hole shall be my dwelling,' he said. "'I must get the thorn tree out so that I can have room.' That was easily said. He had neither axe nor saw nor knife nor spade. How could he do it? He had nothing but his hands. He tried to pull it out by the roots, but in vain. He wasn't strong enough. I must dig it out, said Robinson. He scratched with his nails, but the earth was too hard. What should he do? He sought a stick with a fork in it and dug it in the earth, but it was slow work. Then he found a clam shell. He did better with it, but it was hard work, and Robinson was not used to hard work. The sweat ran down his face and he had often to stop and rest in the shade. The sun burned so hot, and the rock so reflected the heat, that he was all but overcome, but he worked on. When evening came, he would sleep in the tree, and the next morning he would go at it again. On the third day, the roots were all laid bare. But the roots were fast in the clefts of the rock, and he could not loosen it, try ever so hard. What would he not have given for an axe, or at least a knife, and yet he had never thought of their value when at home. He attempted to cut one root through with his clam shell, but the shell crumbled and would not cut the hard wood. He stood for a long time, thinking, not knowing what to do next. He made up his mind that he must have something harder than the shell to cut with. Then he tried a stone with a sharp edge, but soon found he needed another one, however. He found one. Then he set the sharp one on the wood and struck it with his heavy one. In this way, he slowly cut the roots in two. On the fifth day, there was yet left one big root, bigger than any of the others. Robinson got up early in the morning. He worked the whole day. Finally, it gave a crack, and it, too, was broken. Robinson had only now to remove the loose earth inside the cleft. He found the opening could be made large and roomy. It was choked up with dirt. He dug out enough to allow him room enough to make a place to lie down. In the future, he thought, I will take out all the dirt and then I shall be comfortable. It was then dark and the moon shone bright in the heavens. Robinson gathered a heap of dry grass and made himself a safe bed. But as he lay there, he saw the moonbeams shining into his cave. He sprang up. How easy, he thought, for wild animals to creep in here upon me. He crawled out and looked around. Not far from the cave, he saw a large flat stone. With great trouble, he rolled it to the opening of his cave, but before this morning began to dawn. He went inside the shelter seized the stone with both hands and rolled it into the opening till it almost closed it. I have now a closed home. I can again stretch my legs. Wind and rain cannot get at me, nor wild animals. End of chapter 9